Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with whole wheat ciabatta bread. That's right, they say the average cook can't make great artisan whole wheat bread at home. Well, I'm happy to report they is wrong because this experiment to make a whole wheat version of our now famous ciabatta bread was just about a total success. And I know a lot of you requested this version, so I'm so happy it turned out. And this is how we did it. All right, so we're going to start out a little differently than the classic ciabatta bread. We're going to start by making a sponge. And to do that, we're going to throw just a little bit of yeast into a bowl, along with some barely warm water. And then we're going to add not one, but three flours. So we're going to add a little bit of rye flour. We're going to add some regular white all-purpose flour. And we're going to use some whole wheat flour. And we'll go ahead and give that a stir, make sure it's mixed very thoroughly. And while I'm doing that, this would be a great time to tell you that this is not going to be 100% whole wheat bread. We're going to use like a 50-50 blend of whole wheat flour and white flour. And I'll talk about why in the blog. And then once all that's mixed together, we'll go ahead and cover it in plastic. And we'll just let that sit for five or six hours or until it gets all beautifully bubbly. And by the way, this recipe is super easy, but you got to time the steps right. We're doing this sponge step in the afternoon so we can finish the dough tonight and it will be ready to bake in the morning. Okay, so we're going to let that sit for five or six hours at which point it should look like this. You're gonna see lots of bubbles. You should have a very, very active yeast colony growing right now. And if you don't, let it go a little longer, that's fine. All right, so our sponge is looking good and we're gonna move on to the rest of the ingredients. All right, so first up, we're gonna need some salt. We're also gonna put in a little spoon of honey and then a few things to give this a little extra texture, a little extra flavor, a little extra nutrition. We're gonna throw in a little bit of polenta. We're also gonna put in some ground flaxseed. All right, very good for the plumbing. And we're also going to toss in some sunflower seeds. Yes, that's what those baseball players are eating all the time. And then it's time for the rest of the flour. And like I said, we're going to use half white and half whole wheat. So we're going to dump that in. And then we're going to take a wooden spoon, which is my favorite tool for this step. And we're going to stir that until a very sticky dough forms. And as I was starting to stir here, I looked down on the counter and I realized we didn't add the extra water yet. So we're also going to add a half a cup of room temperature water at this stage. And by the way, that's a great reason to measure stuff out and have it on the counter because it was really easy for me to notice I hadn't added it yet. And of course, there's other things like pumpkin seeds or sesame seeds that you can also add into this dough. I mean, suit yourself. You are the Jake LaMotta of your whole wheat ciabatta. And speaking of Raging Bull, people stop sending me emails that your ciabatta bread was flat. It's supposed to be flat. Ciabatta means slipper. It's an oval flat loaf, okay? So save your cards and letters. But anyway, we're going to mix that with a wooden spoon. And once it comes together, I want you to stir that for about three minutes until this forms, which is a very, very sticky, very wet dough ball, which really isn't even a dough ball. It's basically a dough lump, but you can see how it kind of wants to pull together. It kind of sticks to the sides, but it is sort of acting as one unit. Okay, so that's perfect. And of course, I'm gonna give you the measurements, but forget measurements. If yours doesn't look like that, fix it. Or right, if it's too dry, add some water. Or if it's way wetter than that, add a little more flour. Okay, the beauty of video is make it look like that. And once it does look like that, go ahead and scrape down the sides, clean off your spoon, and then we're going to go ahead and wrap that up and let that rise overnight for about 10 to 12 hours or until doubled. All right, and for me, I'm starting this rise about 9.30 at night, which means it should be ready to form into a loaf around 9, 9.30 in the morning, which it was. Check it out. It will have doubled in size, if not a little more. And before we even unwrap this and let you look at it, I want you to prep your pan, which means a heavy-duty baking pan with a piece of parchment on it, and I like to sprinkle some cornmeal. That's optional, but I do like what it does to the bottom crust. And once your pan is prepped, then we can unwrap it and take a look. And you're going to see it's still extremely wet and sticky, but very light and bubbly. And you can see here, even though we didn't need it, it's still very elastic. There's a lot of gluten formation. So at that point, we're going to scrape it out of the bowl onto a floured work surface, lightly floured. We need this dough to stay very wet. All right, so you only want to use a minimum amount of flour on your hands and on the dough, just enough to work with it. And the only thing we need to accomplish in this step is to knock the air out of it, which pretty much is already done by the time you scrape it out, and form it into a smooth-surfaced oval loaf shape, which is what I'm doing here. And like all loaves of bread, if you do have a seam, have it end up underneath. And once you have something that's roughly in an oval shape, or anything similar to that's going to work, we're going to flop it over onto one hand and quickly transfer that onto our sheet pan. And then we're going to need to let this rise for about an hour and a half until it doubles. And we're going to want to cover it. And what I like to use lately is floured plastic wrap. All right, so take some wrap and get it super floury. And then drape that over your loaf. And by the way, I really should have put flour down on the loaf. My plastic totally stuck to the top. So I'm actually going to give you some extra tips about that on the blog. But anyway, we're going to cover that. And we're going to let that sit in some kind of warmish area for about an hour and a half. Could be a little quicker. Could be a little longer. Who knows? 
But when it's ready for the oven, it's going to look like this. And yes, it definitely grows out more than it grows up. And the main reason is because we have such a moist dough, which is critical for the texture and taste. So that's actually perfect, except for the scars around here where the plastic stuck. But the good news is, once this stuff bakes, no blemishes will ever be seen. And at that point, we want to get our oven cranked up to 450 degrees. And then once that oven comes up to temperature and you're ready to pop it in, we want to go ahead and mist the top with water. All right, you've seen this do that in other bread videos. That's really gonna help form that crust. And then once our oven is ready and it's reached 450 degrees, we're gonna go ahead and pop our loaf in. Yes, I have a pan of water at the bottom, I usually do. But anyway, pop that in and we're gonna bake that at 450 degrees for about 30 to 35 minutes. And then every once in a while, maybe two or three times during the baking process, we wanna open up the oven and give it a quick spray of water. That really is the secret to a great crust. All right, that's really gonna give you that shiny, crusty, kind of blistered, artisan loaf look, and if you've tried our baguette recipe, you know it works. So spray quickly, close it back up, and then like I said, about 30 to 35 minutes, your whole wheat ciabatta bread should be done and look like this. Oh yeah, that's a handsome loaf. But anyway, let's just not stand around high-fiving ourselves. Let's go ahead and transfer this onto a cooling rack, and then I'm only gonna say this once, you have to let this cool before you slice it, all right? Let me repeat that. You have to let this cool before you slice it. Completely cool, but once it is, go ahead and slice it up. Man, that sounds good. Not only did it sound good, it looked good. Look at that crumb structure, or matrix, or whatever they call it. It looks pretty good. Let me get one more slice here. And more importantly than the looks, the taste really was excellent. All right, for being half whole wheat, this still had a very mild flavor. It did not have that overly bitter, too earthy flavor that you get with some whole wheat breads. And then of course, for the ultimate serving suggestion, you're gonna wanna toast this and put some butter on it. I mean, I demoed this a few years ago and it really, really caught on. I mean, everybody's doing it. All right, so if you haven't experienced that yet, you wanna check that out. But anyway, that's it, whole wheat ciabatta. If you were a fan of our original no need version and wanna play around with a whole wheat version, then I really hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.